Ghosts and ghost stories. They're fun to share and creep us out. But sometimes we forget that the people who experienced them were absolutely terrified. Do you want to be terrified too? The Little Girl Near Renmark, South Australia, 1992 Haley and her husband had two young daughters, one who was almost three years old and the second six months old. They all moved into a rented house that was brand new in a new housing estate near Renmark in South Australia, while they were awaiting their new farmhouse to be built. Haley and her husband had taken a six-month lease and hoped their home would be done and built by then. Haley's husband Grant wasn't often at the house, as he spent his time between the farm, which was 200 kilometres away, and this property. And on top of that, he was a long-haul truck driver. A few weeks after moving in, Haley's eldest daughter started to tell her about a friend. She called her the little girl. And at first, Haley wasn't too worried and assumed it was just an imaginary friend. After they had been there for about a month, Haley left home to go to the shops and returned an hour later. She came home to find her daughter's name written correctly in magnetic letters on her magnetic blackboard. As she looked around the room, she noticed that all the other letters and chalk were thrown around the room. It wasn't like that when she left an hour or so earlier, and her daughter couldn't even spell her name correctly at that age either. The first thing her daughter said was, Mommy, look what the little girl did. She played with my toys because she was bored. After that, Haley would often find words or sentences written in chalk or magnetic letters on the board when no one had been around. Strange sentences like, I missed you, and don't leave me here. Soon enough though, the strange messages that started appearing became more negative like, I don't like that, and you are horrible, and even phrases like, I'm going to break your toys. Haley, of course, started to grow quite concerned, and not knowing exactly who or what was leaving those strange messages on the board, she thought long and hard about what to do. She then decided to throw out the board, letters and chalk all into the bin. A day or so after she did that, the strangeness ramped up even more. She noticed that she started to have doors slamming for no reason, and would come home to find food being strewn all across the floor when no one was home. As well as this, toys were being found in places they hadn't been left and where her daughter couldn't even reach. As it was getting a bit too much, Haley eventually asked her daughter to describe her friend. Her daughter told her that her friend was this high and stood on the couch and reached her hand out to show the height of about a seven-year-old. She told her mum that her friend had long hair in plaits and that she wore a long dress with another dress like Nanny's apron. Her daughter then added that she liked her friend's boots, and added that they had buttons all the way down, and that she wore something like a shower cap. To Haley, she imagined a child dressed like in the late 1880s, and had no idea how a three-year-old would have gotten all that detail. At different times, other family members, including her husband, asked about the little girl, and they were always given the exact same description. Haley started to get concerned, as her youngest daughter was waking up screaming for no reason, and her eldest was saying that the little girl didn't like her and was scaring her. A few times, when Haley went to go into her youngest daughter's room, the door would forcefully slam in her face. The elder daughter started to act strangely and would tell her that the little girl wanted her to go down to the river, which was directly behind the house, so that they could play together. She also started to tell her that the little girl would get angry at her and scare her with a monster face, because her daughter wouldn't be naughty and do what the little girl told her to do. When Haley asked her daughter, what is it that the little girl wants you to do, she said, the little girl wants me to break toys and go down to the river and stay with her all the time. 
Thoroughly creeped out and immensely concerned, Haley decided to send her daughter down to the mother's place, which was 500 kilometers away, with the hope of putting an end to it all. By now her daughter had become so distressed that she wouldn't walk past her room unless the door was closed and Haley was holding her hand. This was because a few times the door of her own room had flown open and her daughter would run screaming to the other end of the house. She also refused to enter her room and would sleep on the floor of Haley's room every night. Creating the distance didn't help though and she started obsessively telling her grandmother about the little girl and how mad she would be once she went home and how scary the little girl was now. Haley's mum took her to the doctor to see if some light could be shed on this, but medically she was fine. Desperate for answers, Haley did some research at the local historical society and found out that their house had been built on an old woodyard. Back in the day, it had been used by the paddle steamers to refuel their wood piles, and there were stories that people had been buried there in unmarked graves, but of course there were no records which wasn't unusual for that time period. The first night her daughter did come back home, she was in the bath, and her bathroom and bathroom doors were both closed. Haley was in the room with her, and heard her bedroom door open slowly. Then suddenly, the bathroom door flew open, and her daughter started screaming hysterically that the little girl was really mad at her and making the monster face. That was the last straw. Haley, putting her soaking wet daughter in the car, grabbed her other daughter, their dog, some essentials, and spent the night away with some friends. The next day, Haley returned only with a friend to pack up everything. They had been in the house three months, and that was enough. On returning to gather her things, Haley found the house just as she had left it. All except for her eldest daughter's room, which had been trashed. Her toys and clothes were everywhere. Her bedding had been stripped off the bed and was all over the room. Her mattress was up against the inside of the closed door, making it very difficult to open. Haley packed everything up, returned the keys and forfeited her bond, but she was adamant that she wasn't going back to that house ever again. As far as we know, that house still stands there and it makes you wonder who was the little girl? And is she still in the home terrorizing other innocent people? If you love the show, please nominate us for an award. It's free to nominate until the 1st of November 2022 under the Best Mystery slash Paranormal Podcast of the Year category. Link in the description. Nowhere to Run Ohio, USA, circa 2000. Georgia's most frightening paranormal experience happened when she was about six years old. Her parents had recently divorced, and her mum had moved in with her new boyfriend. He lived in a modular home that was a duplex in a small town in Ohio, USA, and the half of the property that Georgia and her older sister lived in had a full basement. Georgia shared the basement as a bedroom with her older sister Hannah, and although it was built as a basement, it was properly decked out as a bedroom for the two of them, and was quite comfortable. They lived there for some time before this happened, but one night she was awoken up about 3am to a strange scratching noise. She didn't know what it was, and looked around the room, but in the darkness she couldn't see a thing. Georgia's eyes took a minute or two to adjust to the darkness, but when they did, she noticed that the far corner of the room was unusually dark. She stared at this strange darkness for some time, when suddenly she felt a wave of uneasiness and fear wash over her. She now anxiously scanned the rest of the room, looking for anything out of place. Her fear increasing, she looked in all the corners and could see nothing out of the ordinary until she looked back into the corner, where it looked darker than the rest of the room. She started to shake as she saw what looked like red glowing eyes staring back at her from the darkness. 
Unable to move from the utter fear for what felt like forever, but may have only been a few seconds, Georgia froze. And all the while, those red glowing eyes coldly and creepily staring at her from the darkness. She desperately tried to say her sister's name in an attempt to wake her up, but when she opened her mouth, no sound came out. She looked over to her sleeping sister nervously and tried calling to her again, without any luck. Then she looked back at the red glowing eyes, and it appeared as if the eyes were moving closer and closer to her. In sheer terror and without thinking about it, Georgia, who was suddenly able to move, jumped out of the bed and ran towards the stairs. As she was running up the stairs, something grabbed her nightgown and pulled her backwards down the stairs. She landed flat on her back with such a loud thud and so hard a fall that it knocked the wind out of her and it woke her sister up. Quickly, her sister Hannah turned on the light to see what was happening and saw Georgia lying on the floor. Georgia doesn't quite recall, but Hannah later told her that she was mumbling about something being in the room. And soon, their mother appeared at the top of the stairs, obviously having heard the commotion. They searched the basement and found nothing, and eventually concluded that it was just Georgia's mind playing tricks on her. Her sister checked her for injuries from the fall, and Georgia was okay, except for three distinct scratches on her back. After this incident, they didn't live there long, as it was way too small for the whole family, and soon they would move to just a few roads over in the same town. Interestingly though, Georgia says that the paranormal activity didn't stop there. Maybe she'll share another story with us in future. This show is made possible by people like you sharing their real life experiences. So please feel free to contact me. Thanks for joining me on this creepy adventure. Until next time.